You are listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I'm a general dentist, a practice owner, and a certified life coach. I teach women who own dental practices to lead with intention and literally fall in love with their businesses. Keep listening and you will see how learning to love your practice turns into loving your life too. Hey ladies, have you ever been in the middle of a clinical day when your assistant or your hygienist or someone who works for you does something that you want them to do a little bit different or maybe a lot different? Maybe you're a little bit irked or you're furious. Either way, I have felt the pain of being in the middle of taking care of humans and not being able to take the time right then and there to be the manager as well. And then what happens typically is we get to the end of the clinical day and we still haven't talked to that person about what we want them to do differently. And there's two reasons for that. One is because we really are busy. We really are. But the other one is that there's reasons our brain will give us not to have that conversation. It's uncomfortable. And we don't know exactly what we're going to say or how we're going to do it. We don't know how to have a conversation about positive changes that don't turn frustrating for the recipient or for us or both. And the thing is that I have had so many clients come to me and complain about this problem that I have actually made a course just for you, you female dental owners, and it doesn't cost anything at all. <laughs> I made it for you for free. It's deeper than I can go in just a podcast. So what I did was I put the whole course together in a, um, a little online bundle and all you do is text me to get the course so I have this number set up it's 66866 such an easy number to remember and you just text the words love your employees to the number but you can't leave any spaces between the words or it won't come back correct I don't know what you'll get if you leave a space but so your autocorrect will want you to leave spaces there. You got to go back in and delete the spaces. Love your employees to 66866. And the next time someone does something in your practice that you want to change, you will have a very easy system that smooths out the speed bumps that our brain wants to put in place for us to not do the thing. But trust me, I have helped many women do this before. It's a tried and true plan. I use it myself text the number, and then I'll see you in the course. Hey docs, Dr. Laura Mock here again today. I hope everyone is having a beautiful fall. I know we are here. I just went on a wonderful run where I got to look at all the different colors. And dental practice is still as crazy as ever. Uh, you know, we've been transitioning to being fee for service. So I've been a little bit distracted by my own dental practice. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and today I prepared a special episode with for you with another Dr. Laura. <clears throat> this one is Dr. Laura Brenner. And she is a <clears throat> educated dentist who has exited practicing dentistry all the way and serves dentists in a very unique way. So it's kind of interesting because in some ways we're sort of the opposite and in other ways we are very, very similar. So listen in, it's definitely a walk through um, what creates satisfaction in careers and um, what we deserve as women and, and how we get what we were planning on, what we were expecting on having as practicing dentists. Give it a listen and I'll see you on the other side. All right, so I would like to welcome to our program, Dr. Laura Brenner. Dr. Brenner, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh my gosh, thank you, Laura. You have to call me Laura. Okay, too. we'll just call <laughs> each other Laura, okay? <laughs> it's really confusing, actually. Maybe you should call me Dr. Renner, but thank you for having me. It's so great to be here with you. Yeah, this has been on my calendar for, I think, months, and I've been waiting for this special day with very excited feelings. So I appreciate you taking the time because you're busy now. Well, I think, yeah, life is busy. It's good. Uh, whoever thought that we could be as busy when we're not in a dental practice. 
that's yeah things right <laughs> yeah so there's probably um people listening who are like but who is she so i i just want so you hold a very unique place within dentistry and i'm going to let you describe it and we all want to know kind of how you fell into it as well because i don't think anyone goes to dental school uh, planning to help dentists get out of dentistry <laughs> so, so tell me what you do I used to joke that I was the black sheep of dentistry. Like here I am trying to get people to leave. <laughs> I'm kind of picturing you with the grim reaper circle in your hand. <laughs> okay, I'll own it. Um, but, you know, just to clarify, that isn't my goal is to get people to quit at all. all right. And I think you know that, yes. but, you know, not everybody does. So we'll, we'll get there. But um, yeah, I practiced dentistry for 10 years. And in year three, I became severely burnt out. And you'll remember, Laura, this was in 2004. Mm -hmm. And um, no one was talking about burnout at that time at all. It just wasn't even a word, I think, in any industry. And so I thought I just hated dentistry. And I was extremely unhappy. And my only solution was my gut was telling me I needed to quit, but I made a lot of, you know, we invest so much into this career that my, I, my brain wouldn't let me, my brain was telling me, you have to, you have to do this. You've chosen it. You've got to do it. So, you know, over the next, that was starting in year three, over the next seven years, I played this game of, you know, trying to make it better. And it was, I was on a roller coaster. Sometimes we're good. Then the bad times would always come back and I could never get it sorted out. I could never get that feeling of um, contentment in my heart. Like I just couldn't reach it ever. And when I was happier in dentistry, it's because I was really coping and convincing myself mm -hmm. that it was okay. And so, you know, in year seven, I hit my next wall where I was like, I need to get out of this. So I started working with a career coach and then, you know, I was still trying to pour into dentistry. I mean, I went down to the Panky Institute. I tried everything I did uh, short of owning my own practice, which I knew in my heart was not the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. And so I tried everything. So in year seven was when I really started to commit to figuring this out and it, it wasn't working for me still. So I, so I, I basically quit dentistry at my 10th year of practice mm -hmm. and it wasn't until 2020, I was doing a talk with the, uh, Rocky mountain dental convention on burnout. And I started researching burnout. And I looked at every single sign of burnout and I was like, oh my gosh, I was burned out. And I had no idea. I just thought I hated my career. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting because your burnout was a part of your path to where you help other people now. Yeah. And I didn't even tell you how I fell into this, did I? <laughs> we haven't gotten to the falling. That was part. your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I sort of fast forwarded it a little bit, but what happened was, um, I didn't know what to do. I felt completely stuck. I felt like my identity was so tied into being a dentist that I had no other skills. And if I weren't a dentist, who would I be? And that just kept me here. Yeah. Right. And I think a lot of us settle in, we settle into being a dentist because it could give us the perfect life and, and let's coast. And right? it's like, it's like when you get into the slow line at the grocery store and then you look around and you're like, everyone else is going faster, but I already chose this line. Totally. So I'm going to stay in this slow line because I don't want to start over. Okay. I love that analogy. I have not heard that good one. I love that one. That's Thank a good you. one. Yeah, exactly. Because then you're like, well, what if that line gets slower? And then yeah, I'm, I have so much to lose by getting out of this line. Right. And if I go into that other line, what if someone else jumps in front of me when, you know, and, and that is exactly what it's like 
um, we keep ourselves stuck here. And that's what I was doing. I kept myself stuck here. And then finally, it just got to the point where I was so miserable. I was really depressed, but I was really good at hiding it even from myself because I'm a pretty upbeat person in general. Mm -hmm. And so it was what I call a chronic low-grade depression. And there was a lot of, I, I just was, I came home crying every day. Finally, one day my husband was like, you cannot do this anymore. He's like, you can't come home crying every day, sort it out. I don't care what you need to do with your career. Quit if you want. I don't care. We'll move if we need to sell our house, but do something because our marriage isn't going to last. Oh, and that's really yeah. sweet. You know, I think a lot of dentists feel pressure from their spouse to keep on turning the wheel. Totally. Oh, I hear amazing. it all the time. Amazing. And yeah, it was kind of delivered in the form of an ultimatum, but it was really permission. Yeah. Right. So at that point, I gave myself the permission to change and talk about falling into this. He um, saw, a, I mean, I was Googling all the different things that I could do. And, you know, when you do that, you just get stuck in Google land and you never make any progress. You're just like all talk and no action. <laughs> yeah. We call that passive action where we're just oh. bringing in the information without actually making a move on it. Right. And it can be really helpful for a time, right? Yeah. But you got to move fat, move past it. Right. Or because you otherwise you just keep churning. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I was doing. And then one day he was like, hey, look at this, this little blurb in the newspaper. It was this travel show host contest for this. You don't know this story for this travel website. <laughs> it, I can't remember what it was called, but um, it was submit a one minute video. And if you win, you get like $250,000 towards a house and in any country, you know, wherever you want. And you get to be the show host of their new travel show they're rolling out. And my husband was like, you should do this. And I was like, really? <laughs> so far out of like my skill set and my <laughs> comfort zone. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not good on camera. I'm not all these things, right? I, I'm not creative enough. Well. I ended up deciding to do it and I had so much fun with it. I got really creative. I created this little skit and I videoed it and I ended up, you know, not winning, um, which was fine, but I got my heart set on it, even though I didn't do it to win. I did it because I was like, I'm just talking mm -hmm. and I'm so miserable and my energy's stagnant. I need to shift my energy and Maybe this will be like, I'm putting a sign out to the universe, like, okay, bring me something. I'm willing to change. So let's change things. And I didn't win, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to make, I'm going to turn uh, lemon, these lemons into lemonade. And I started a blog. Okay. The blog. Yes. That's how the blog happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, was writing about things I liked because I was so stuck, but that was amazing because it connected me with my creative thinking. Um, I never thought of myself as a writer. Were you still practicing at this point? I was. Okay. Yeah. And it made practice a little better too, because I had something else to focus on. Mm -hmm. I'm always talking about like, do something on the side, start a side gig. Cause, cause when you start a side gig, dentistry won't be your whole world. Yes. The challenges in it aren't as massive they just are blending in with your the rest of your life if you're doing other stuff right and blogging did that for me it gave me something else to focus on but it also helped me to pay attention to what was going on around me mm -hmm. and then I started seeing opportunities of other things that I could do mm -hmm. and so um I I knew I was into nutrition and had all sorts of qualifications of, you know, we create so many qualifications for ourselves when we're in this position, because we really do not want to make a mistake moving forward. And I found this weight loss coaching program that I was able to start this business um, from this blogging. And, and as I was getting ready to uh, kind of fast forward a little bit, I started this, it was like a side gig, weight mm -hmm. loss coaching. I was getting ready to quit and quit dentistry and, and move over to that. And I saw a blog post titled 10 Reasons I Hate the Dentist. Oh, I remember that. And I was like, oh 
you suck. <laughs> so, and it was supposed to be funny, right? It was funny. And I was like, all right, fine. Well, here's 10 reasons your dentist probably hates you too. And I remember so I wrote that. that back. Yeah. Right. And it went viral overnight. It did. And really that's how I fell into my coaching business because I suddenly, first of all, I thought I was the only one who felt unhappy in my career you know, we invest so much in this and it's supposed to be our dream and it's supposed to give us everything we want. And I couldn't create solutions for myself. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like I was a quitter and a failure. And suddenly I had all these other people who were emailing me and saying, wow, that's so cool. How'd you do it? You know, I feel the same way. And, and suddenly I was like, oh, this is actually a thing. And so, yes, it took me six years after that to decide to go back into coaching and help other people. The way I describe it now is really design your career so that you can align it with your life, whether that's in or out of dentistry. Yes. Um, but it, it, so I fell into it. It was a long, slow fall, fall <laughs> down a hill. <laughs> I'm not off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And so now, I mean, it's like you, you were one of the first people to publicly admit that dentists have a hard time enjoying their career. Right. And so, yeah. then, and that created like a natural following because people were like, yes, girl, thank you for saying that. And then you took those people who we're happy to admit that they were also unhappy presently and helped them. Now you help people create and fashion their lives um, with, with or without dentistry, but making a plan to do something besides dentistry. Is that a good way to put it? That's a great way to put it. Cause yeah, like, like we said at the beginning, I'm not here to try to get people to quit. Like, yeah. you know, as coaches, as a coach, the, this is the best part about being a coach is I don't have to be attached to another person's agenda. I don't have to have an agenda. They get to do what they want. And that was one of my challenges in dentistry, actually, was I felt like I was so attached to what other people decided to do for themselves and that I had to deal with the consequences. Well, you know, if someone wants to stay in dentistry and love it, I love that too. I wish I could have had that, you know, but if you're not, let's do something about it. And sometimes the solution is to do what I did and go to the Panky Institute or, you know, another CE course like that, or to work with you, Laura, and, and work on yourself and how you can make it happy. But sometimes those things don't work and we need to offer the solution for people that, okay, it might involve working less. Yeah. and doing something on the side that can bring in separate income, or it might involve a total career change. Mm -hmm. um, because there's no matter what, there's no reason to stay stuck and miserable in your life. Like it's, you can, I used to tell myself, I don't have to suffer my way through this life for it to be valuable. And like, why can't I have fun? I'm not having fun. Why can't I have fun? Right. And, and I'll, and we should talk about that. Like, why do I set our, why do we set ourselves up to think we can't, but I'm kind of like the perfect example of someone that you might coach because I do have a side hustle. My side hustle is coaching, but I still practice dentistry and I love my coaching. It's very cerebral. It's very much doesn't involve my body which is great because I really only want to lean over patients a certain number of hours a week, right? And then I get to lean into this other thing where I, I uh, nurture my ability to listen, to reflect, and to enrich other people's lives without having to convince them to get a crown. <laughs> that makes sense totally right nobody's ever gonna hug me and tell me thank you so much for this crown it fits so gloriously I I can tell those these margins are tight <laughs> right but there's plenty of times when I have women come to me and say I feel so much better after talking to you thank you so much it's just an example of how it can enrich your life to not make your whole world around dentistry 
absolutely. You are like the perfect prototype of what I would guide someone towards as like a prototype up for what, well, and I, I want to be careful saying this. I was going to say for success, but we all have to define success for ourselves. That's the first thing we need to do. But as far as like, I could list off so many people like you who have these side gigs, coaching is your side gig, or you know what? They're both side gigs. Maybe, I don't know. You may not see dentistry as a side gig any, because it's, it is, you know, still a full on business, <laughs> but in the world, I mean, if you're doing it clinical, what, three days a week. Yep. I mean, that could be considered a side gig, you know? So anyway, but the, the whole point is really that you are balancing your life out and finding other ways to get income, other ways to get that satisfaction and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And doesn't it make your dentistry so much better knowing you have your side gig? I, I cannot tell you how many ways my practice is better because of my side gig. Everybody says that. Yes. I mean, first of all, I teach other women how to lead. And so I have to walk the walk and I have to study it. And my employees, you know, I don't, I'm not short staffed. Mm. I actually have, um, I, my team is actually bigger now than it ever has been. And every single one of them is super loyal and well-trained. And I am going to attribute that to the fact that I have spent so many hours studying leadership and just Absolutely. putting it into practice, you know? Yeah. And taking <laughs> responsibility for it. Yeah. Way. Cause the leadership always has to come from you or the top, it does. top right? Yeah. Okay. So this is great. I, obviously you have a, you have fulfilled a need within within dentistry, but I want to pick your brain because you've talked to a lot of people who are unhappy with practicing dentistry. I want to talk about why you think dentists get, I don't know, I don't want to say depressed, but unhappy with their careers. What's happening that's making them feel stressed and overwhelmed? Yes. So I like to be a little bit of an instigator, as you know, <laughs> and I, I'm going to say this in a very loving way, but I think it's our fault that okay. we're getting okay. in this way. Go on. Um, yeah. And so uh, I think people pleasing and perfectionism happen to be two of the biggest causes of the pain that we feel because it leads to a cascade of so many other problems that really the problems aren't, they're not necessarily real outside of our heads half the time. I agree. Right? <laughs> I agree. I want, I, I love this because if we're the ones who create it, we can uncreate it. Should we decide to? Right. Right. And, and, and because what I've noticed is the people who are, and, and keep in mind, I talk to a really unique segment of our dentist population because they're the people who aren't talking to everybody else because they don't feel comfortable saying these things to everybody else. But I've seen a pattern like 90 to hundred <laughs> percent. That's an unofficial statistic, but not a lot of the people that I talk to they are, they really care about their patients or their staff. Like they really care about other people and they're, they're, they're basically living their lives, putting everyone's needs before their own. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to make, this is where the people pleasing comes in. They're trying to make sure their patients are always happy and they'll go out of their way. And, you know, they'll stay late if they have to, like, there's this culture in dentistry where we have to go above and beyond and which is great if you feel fulfilled by that as well. Yeah. But if you're going above and beyond and, and you're sacrificing yourself, you're going to end up resenting it. You're going to end up always worrying. You're going to feel like you have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders to make everybody else's experience okay. You know, like if you talk to the dentist who's like, oh, shoot, you know, I, 
I unscrewed the healing cap today and the implant, the whole implant, you know, unscrewed and came out. And the one who's going to, yes, everyone's going to be upset about that. But the one who's going to let go of it and move on is the one who is like somewhere along the way in life, they've learned how to not, not, you know, be more solution focused and to know that, okay, you know what, it's done my best. I'll just, here's a solution. I'll be clear with the patient. We'll sort it out. We'll fix it. Right. Whereas the other dentists are the ones who in their head, it's like, oh my gosh, they're going to blame me. This is where the worrying happens. They're going to blame me. They're going to think I'm a bad dentist. I did something wrong. They're going to, I feel so sorry for them. It's like, we're carrying their life experience on our shoulders and thinking that it's our responsibility to take care of it. And I think that's what leads to burnout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I see ladies do, because all of my um, clients are ladies, is I see them, they have this certain way that they want to practice dentistry, but then they have how everybody else wants them to practice dentistry. So that might be patients who are more insurance focused than they want to be. And they want their free cleaning. And I say that with air quotes twice a year, instead of the proper way that this lady wants to take care of them, or somebody wants them to pull a number two with endo and the dentist doesn't really want to do it, but the patient is putting pressure on the dentist to just say yes and do it herself instead of referring it. This kind of like energy makes you feel like you're one of those wind socks in front of the used car lots, you know, where you're bending this way when the wind is blowing this way because somebody wants you to do something and then you're bending the other way and then you're hurrying home to your family. <laughs> <laughs> because you have obligations at home as well of taking care of other humans. Um, and this type of lack of vision, lack of commitment to yourself really creates a lot of misery. Absolutely. Well, misery that wouldn't you say that comes from this lack of congruency mm -hmm. in your life? Like, what do you want? Like, yes. And, and what's important to you. And it just, yeah. And believing that it's, here right now. <laughs> that it's okay to stick with what you want and filter through and lose some patients who don't want the same thing you want. Yeah. And that's okay to filter through that and just practice in the way that's consistent with what you want and let the patients who like that be attracted to you instead of trying to make everybody happy. Yeah, I love your examples because the example I always use is the one where like the patient asks you to do an extra filling or two because it's on that side so you can save a trip for them mm -hmm. and you don't really have time, you're overstressed, but you do it anyway and then you're working through lunch and yeah. the, all these things are sacrifices Yeah, that that we need boundaries for. We, we need boundaries. We need to set up how we practice dentistry or how we show up for our practice. And ourselves mm -hmm. instead of just letting everybody else define it for us. I, I agree. I think that creates a lot of unhappiness. And let's talk about being a perfectionist. How do you see that creating misery with your people? Yeah, because perfectionism is really about practicing defensively. Mm -hmm. You are afraid of dealing with consequences, which is a result of the people pleasing, right? We don't want, we want to be liked. We don't want people to get mad at us. We want them to be happy. We don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to get sued all the consequences, or we don't have to want to have to redo a crown, right? Like even that, even though it could work out fine, it kind of sucks to have to redo a crown, you know? Yeah. Um, so we think, okay, if I can only be perfect, then I won't have to deal with those consequences. But that's the challenge with dentistry is you could do the most perfect work and it's nature, it's life, it's health, it's unpredictable, yeah. might not work out. And so, but we're creating this ideal that we can't ever reach. It's unrealistic. So think about it. It's like a no-win situation we're creating for ourselves. Imagine like every day of your life, you're going to work and you're you're, you're in a no win situation. How would you feel good about that? How could you feel good about that? Well, and we got set up for that. Originally, yes. it wasn't 
us, it was, we need to get perfect grades so we can get into dental school. And then when we were in dental school, we were taught that there, yes, there are all these factors working against us, but here are the steps that you can take to make it perfect. Perfect margin, perfect angles, perfect amount of curing and testing your curing light and you know all these things. And, and if there's stains that show up or if the root canal fails, then it's on you. You know, when you get these practicals where everything has to be perfect, the wax up's got to be perfect, the temporary crown's got to be perfect, blah, blah, blah. And so we get into a habit of expecting that of ourselves. And nobody teaches us to also have a habit of having grace for us. Totally. And you know what? You just said it. I think the, the biggest thing you said in there was, and if it doesn't work out, it's on you. Yeah. I remember in dental school hearing over and over this this exact quote, once you touch a tooth, you own it. Do you remember that? Yes. And, and like, I get it. I think that's a really valuable, important teaching because it teaches us to choose our cases wisely and take it seriously. And, but for people who already have that people pleasing perfectionists, we want to be the good little girls and boys in class. Mm -hmm. Like we take that to the extreme. Yes. And, and so then we own everything and, and think about how, if you own everything, that's just going to make you fry. You're just going to fry. Mm -hmm. You've nothing left. Yeah. They're, you're just gonna, every day you're going to be walking around with this fear that you suck and, <laughs> and you're going to be seeing the evidence that you suck. And then just carrying that around like a bag of rocks on your back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you think are the biggest challenges that dentists face? Are, um, like, what are the different categories of stuff like insurance or employees? Or what are the things that they're coming to you and saying, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's a, I haven't been asked that question before. So the, that's a fun one. So I think the people who I talk to the most, the number one challenge is patience and patient relationships. Mm -hmm. And even, and I'll, I'll, I'll go more into that to say that it's, these people are really good with their patient relationships. They're great with their patients. Their patients love them. They have no idea that on the inside, these dentists are like, Ugh, you know, like so frustrated <laughs> and really unhappy. You know, they, they're, they're so good at, but that's part of the self-sacrifice, right? Is I'm going to make you feel good while I feel bad, right? But it's, but it's the pressure with patients. It's the, and I think our culture has changed over the last several decades to where it didn't used to be the mom and pop type of, like it's type of relationships. We've become more litigious. And I think there's this barrier. This is the challenge when you feel this barrier between you and the patient in that relationship, even though you love talking to them, there's still something. So that would be the first thing that I see. I find that patients now, um, or especially the younger ones, so younger than probably 35, are fickle. They're quick to change. It's like a difference in how the younger part of our country consume things, you know? They're quick to try, try something else. And then we have the dentist brain that's afraid that their practice is going to shrink instead of expand. And they have this assumption that the number of patients being up, going up is better for the practice, which is just an assumption. But when we go by that assumption, and then we are afraid every time we interact with someone that today might be the day they decide to go somewhere else then it's much harder for us to act in that way where we're being consistent with how we want to practice. Right. Yeah. And let's expand that because I can tell you there were times where I wish people would have gone away. Like think about, <laughs> as you say that, I'm like, oh my gosh, that would have solved some of my problems and I wouldn't have lost two weeks of sleep over it. Because <laughs> instead I was worrying about that root canal um, that I perfed. Yeah. The one in my entire career, right? And thinking, oh, I wish that person would just go away. And like, I wish not really the person, but the problem, you want the problem. And so, you know, it's that. And also 
these other things that we still have to deal with day to day with patients, like having to deal with an uncomfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. My tooth hurts and it didn't hurt before you touched Touched it. it. (laughs) You know, it's like, that stuff's hard. It's hard to deal with every day. It is like, and there's the, their, their expectation. And then there's what you imagine their expectation is, Yes, you know, like all the time, imagining somebody being unhappy with you, which is much more painful than actually hearing the words from the patient, but just totally. (sighs) Okay. So patience, patience. Okay. The second thing, especially now is, um, you know, being short staffed and, and team. Um, so it's especially difficult with, I'm seeing a lot of people are down hygienists. Yes. Um, so I think that's another stressor, but it isn't, it isn't as common. It, it, it's not as common as the first with, with my demographics of the people I'm talking to the patients. Um, but some of them it is, some of them it's this, this HR, this running this business and having all these other responsibilities and, and, and how do I, how do I feel balance when I have to wear all these hats in my practice? And, and I think feeling very isolated and alone in that process. Well, then there's the additional problem. problem of being afraid that people will leave if you lead the way you want to. So oh, you yes. want to require a certain thing of your hygienist, especially, or if you want to ask them to change something, but there's this constant fear right now that the hygienist will then leave and you won't have a hygienist at all. That so much reminds me of the, the analogy you were using of that air. What do you call that air? The windsock thing. The windsock. <laughs> the <little Yeah>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> we do that with patients, but we're doing that probably more with our teams. Definitely more. Most of my team, uh, my most of my clients, definitely more with their team. Yeah. It's hard because they want to move their practice forward, but then they have this little group of, you know, dental workers, dental team members. They are typically people who do not like change and need evidence if there's going to be change. And if I have this frazzled client who's got patients to take care of, family at home, doesn't have the time to work on her practice or she believes she doesn't. So she doesn't have the time to sit and talk to the team and work collaboratively on improving the patient uh, patient experience. Then what happens is she just continues to uh, resent the team, resent the team, do what they want until she loses her shit. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love what you do because I've been in practices where the team is resistant to change because they have experienced in the past knowing that, okay, great. We're, they're presenting this new change to us and we're going to be the ones doing all the work mm-hmm. and the doctor is not going to be the one to change. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I love about you do what you do because your work is helping the change, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because she's got to do her part to introduce the change. And I actually just gave a lecture over the summer at the Happy Dentist Retreat um, with Dr. Ankur Gupta, where we talked for an hour about what a brain needs to be ready to change, you know? And so the leader who are the, the dentists we're talking about, if they invest in understanding what a brain needs for change, then her, she gets to reap the rewards of a happier team and a, a practice that she has improved, right? But that takes the dentist removing herself from the hamster wheel and taking the time to learn it. Right, right. Which also creates the motivation, right? Or, or not creates, comes from, like we need to have that motivation to want to improve things and to start with ourselves. Yes. And And um, believe that that can make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Which can be hard. What else? What else are they complaining about? Mine are complaining about insurance. Um, mine are not, yeah, they're complaining about insurance, but that's the least of their problems. (laughs) They're just really unhappy with the work. 
the work. Um, the they're more, there's just probably more confidence, confidence mm -hmm. in their work. Mm -hmm. um, it, and, and not everyone, you know, some of the people who are like, some of the people I work with are some of the best dentists with the most successful practices that mm -hmm. you've ever seen. <laughs> so let's change this perception that if someone's unhappy in this career, it's because they're not doing well enough or because they're not good at it or they're failing. Mm -hmm. Like I've worked with some people who have done all of these like premier CE, you know, worked with these organizations and teach for them and, and they're unhappy. That's more because of the people pleasing and the relationships and the, and just the stress that they carry. Mm -hmm. um, it's from caring too much about others, right? Um, but yeah, there are some, you know, the newer dentists that I'm talking to, that's very much a confidence issue. I'm getting a lot of dentists recently who are in their first year or two, like year to year one, two or three out. Yeah. And they are lacking confidence and um, that's normal in the first years, right? Yeah, it takes five years before you can just sit down and do whatever is presented in your in your day. I yeah, think. and it's interesting. I, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on this because I've talked to like when I was got out of school, I knew oh those first three years. This is why I wasn't so miserable in those years because I knew they were going to be hard, and if I could just push myself through those years, then dentistry was going to get easier and it'd be great. I'd love my career. So when I had to do my first root canal in private practice, I was like, all right, yep, this is scary, but I'm going to do it, you know? And I remember having certain procedures that I'd never done before and kind of scared and getting the patient numb and going into the other, going into the office and calling my, my boss who worked in a different office in his different location in his practice and getting on the phone and being like, okay, I need to do this. Can you walk me through it? Mm -hmm. And he'd walk me through the step by step and I'd go back and do it. Like there was this fear, this fearlessness that balanced out, or maybe let's say this courage that balanced out with the fear to know that like, I'm going to have to do my first root canal. Yeah. I can't put it off forever. And I'm seeing today, there seems to be more of this avoidance. And I don't know what that's about. Maybe it's tied into what you were saying about patients who are under 35 or so there's got to be a cultural thing in dealing with challenges. And mm -hmm. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Well, okay. So life coach hat on what I hear you saying about your experience as a new dentist was that you had language that you were used to saying to yourself that gave you space to be a learner. Mm. I'm going to, I'm learning how to do this. This is my first time. This is okay. I'm scared, but it's fine. You know, and then, and there's a self-talk that you, you took on as a new practitioner, that was very powerful for you. That really helped you a lot. You didn't do it on purpose. It just was automatic. Right. Um, and of course, what we do in our coaching is we actually turn that off of autopilot and we choose what we want to tell ourselves as we're struggling. Right. But then what's happening with the new people now, I don't know. I mean, I'm just guessing but they're not allowing themselves that grace to be a learner for some reason. And it might be, I should have learned this in school and I didn't because my, I had a bad experience in school because of the pandemic. And, and so, and now I'm afraid nobody's gonna like me or something like that. Nobody's gonna be okay with me being a learner. Or I, or I bet there's a lot of, I have so much debt, I have to hurry up and know this, but I don't know how to get to the other side of the bridge where I know it. And in the meantime, the banks and the, the debt is just sitting here on me. They're thinking more about that than giving themselves the grace that you gave yourself. I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah, we don't know. It's interesting, but I think COVID has affect, impacted it a lot because even just from a mechanical standpoint, they've lost hours and hours of practice time in clinic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you bring up the debt. That's another thing. It's so much more than it was when we graduated. It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies, if you're new, if you're a new dentist and you have 300 grand in debt, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> I know we feel for you. Yeah, we do. Because you really do feel like who wouldn't? Yes, we can change that, but who wouldn't feel trapped by that? Of course, you would feel trapped. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I want to hear from you um, when you're first talking to someone and they're telling you that um, that they're unhappy at work. I know that you give them options of what they can do instead of practicing dentistry, but do you ever coach them and help them where they're at right now? What do you do to help them feel happy with their moments today? Cause they don't have that path out yet. You guys talk about that. Oh yeah, we do. And, and that's where we really focus on boundaries and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I also add into that boundaries from yourself, from your own brain, right? Because mm -hmm. we need to, when we go home at 2 a.m., we need to put that boundary up so that our brain doesn't start thinking about the next day or what happened that day. So it's a lot of, you know, getting real and recognizing that this is how you see your world around you. Um, and, and so based on these perceptions, you know, yeah. how can we change them? And so that would be some of it. And really, for me, this is why some of these people are better suited for you, because I believe it's important, and, and let's just call all of these feelings burnout, okay, sure. just for the sake of this conversation. I think that's fair to say anyway, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think it's really important to distinguish what kind of burnout it is, mm -hmm. meaning is it true burnout where you really like or love what you do, but you're just overtaxed. You're just, you're, you're just at your limit and you you're working too much and you need breaks. And when you get those breaks and that support, it refreshes you. Like you go on that vacation and you come back feeling refreshed and ready to go again. Yes. Everybody likes to stay on vacation. Nobody really wants to come home for the <laughs> most part. Cause that's well, it's just how it is. We'd all rather sit on the beach with that margarita, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you still come home feeling refreshed and you can step back into your work again without being as irritable and annoyed and tired, right? And then there's burnout. So that's burnout when you really like what you do. Then there's burnout when you don't like what, you're do what you do. Mm. And those same cures or treatments for that other kind of burnout will not work for you. You go to yoga. Yeah. It's going to feel great while you're in class, but the minute you leave the room, you're back to worrying about your life again. It, that hour of yoga does nothing, right? You take care of yourself. You exercise, you eat better, you go on, you get support and you still feel these same feelings. Then Oh, you go on a vacation and instead of feeling refreshed, you actually are more depressed to come home and even wonder if maybe I shouldn't take vacations because it makes me feel worse. And I so help someone figure out if they're over here and they need a break and, and a refresh of their perspective or their intuition is saying, leave dentistry. Like, yeah. I mean, that's the that is the challenge that like, as you know, I can't get anyone to like, they have to come to that realization themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where I don't like to work with people who really don't like their careers, but aren't, but are in denial about it, you know? And I understand that that is the process. Um, that's the process that they eventually, they need to go through whatever they need to go through, right? Like we're all going through what we need to go through. That's, that's what's supposed to be happening for us. So they're in the right place. But I find that when somebody's trying to fit square peg into round hole and I'm trying to help them do that, they're not committed to it and they stop coming to appointments. So I think it's really important to get real with yourself and answer the question you just asked me, mm -hmm. which one is it for you? You know, and yeah. you have to be willing to admit to yourself what it really is. And a lot of times I can tell by talking to people on the phone, you know, like I've um, connected you with some women here and there mm -hmm. who I can tell by their languaging, what they're saying that, that they do. And, and I, they, they do like dentistry. They just need to sort it out, you know? Oops. 
and and so um there's it's better for you to work with those people um because it's much more exciting for me to work with the people who are ready to admit that they want change and that we can create that path forward. And, and even the, here's the beauty of dentistry, like that change does not have to mean that you quit like I did. That change yeah. could be, um, you know, years ago I worked with someone who she, drove a long distance to get to her practice and she was feeling so stressed she just wanted to end her day at four instead of five so she could get home earlier and to your point laura she was so afraid of what her her team members would think if she wanted to cut down an hour at the end of her day she was so afraid and she did it and it was like, they were so excited and, she, and it made a huge impact for her. So, you know, it's not just about, um, I'm not trying to get people to quit. It's really about getting real so that you, it's like in dentistry where we say, if we, if we can find the right diagnosis for the tooth or the problem, we can create the right treatment plan. Yeah. Let's start looking at your happiness in your career that way. That, okay, let's start with what is the diagnosis? And then if the diagnosis is, yeah, I need to work on my leadership, they, then you're the brilliant, you're like the lady dentist whisperer, you know? <laughs> I think I know, yeah. <laughs> well, what I would like to do, because sometimes, you know, as we're digging through the cobwebs of a, a female dental practice owner, we do find fears or, or, or assumptions that maybe she should be quitting dentistry. Mm. Maybe, maybe she should sell it and go, um, start a franchise of hot dog stands, or she should stay home with her children, you know, and there's this, like, that can really hang like a stinky piece apple that's rotten on the tree. Um, over her life um, as she, every time she sees a mistake or an unhappy patient, a bad review, you know, or an employee quits on her, then that stinky fruit is kind of like, see, mm -hmm. waving itself around. And I find it very helpful to actually help her delve in and ask herself why she does it. And, and go back even farther than why does she go to dentist? Uh, why does she go to her practice every day? Why does she even get out of bed? You know, and actually find out, is this something, do you, is this fitting in your life? Do you want to go ahead and get out of dentistry? Because we could do that, right? There's nothing that says we have to keep on being dentists. And I think all of us in dentistry can benefit from asking ourselves that question on a regular basis. Am I still having fun? Is this still what I want to do? Because we do have more options than we think we do. And if we want to keep on doing it, then I believe we deserve to have a good time. That's just me. I love that. I'm all about fun. One of my top five core values. And you said something in there that really, you know, you asked me a couple minutes ago, like, how do you help someone decide between like, do I actually like my career or hate my career and I'm burnt out. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I think what you just said is, is how we help them decide. We try to fix the career first. We try to fix ourselves within the career first. Mm -hmm. And if it works great, like you have a lot of success at helping women dentists do that. It works. And if it doesn't, if that same feeling keeps coming back, then maybe there's something else going on. Yeah. And maybe that's good. It is good because then you know. Yeah, and you can sell your practice and grow lavender for a living. I always say that one. Oh, I'll I move, love that. Go move to Montana, start a Her. farm. Yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Whatever it is that makes you happy. There's so many things that being a dentist makes you good at that you don't even realize. Totally. Yeah, which is so fun and exciting. I love it. 
well, gosh, we just agree with each other on just about everything, don't we? <laughs> of course we do. I mean, we're Laura's. I know. You know, there are four dental life coaches named Laura. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. And you know what's so crazy is like, I don't know about you, but my whole life growing up, there were not a lot of Laura's around oh. me. There were Laurens yeah. and Lori's. Yep, Lori's. And now yeah. suddenly I have all these friends who are Laura's and I love it. Cause remember, you know, when you're a kid, you like kind of want another Laura to be yeah. around because it's kind yeah. of a cool connection. We have so many Laura's now. I can't believe it. That's amazing. Well, anyway, that's here, neither here nor there. Or anything, <laughs> anything you want to say to um, my ladies, like, do you have a thing? Um, if there's a, anyone listening who's like, I'm really curious about this side gig thing. Like, what would be an easy way for them to get connected with you? Oh, yes. So I have a Facebook group called, it's private. It's called Dentist Side Gigs. Mm -hmm. And that's a great spot to kind of get ideas, connect. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of voyeurs in there who are just lurking and looking. Um, <laughs> which is better than trolls. <laughs> I haven't seen any trolls or dumpster fires, zero no, dumpster fires. No, I, I can't tell if it's because I just do such a good job of keeping everyone in line or we're not big enough yet. Um, <laughs> but I won't tolerate any of that when it, That's when or if it happens. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, I'm on Instagram at Dr. Lolabees, Dr. Lolabees is my handle on Instagram. And, um, yeah, my website is, you know, you could either go to lolabeescareercoaching.com or if you do a Google search for 10 reasons your dentist hates you, you don't even have to have the title right. It'll come up and link to my blog and I have a contact page on there where uh, Perfect. you can connect with me. And we can put all of that in the show notes too. So that yeah. if someone's driving, they don't need to stop or try to text themselves something, you can check or it out later. Well, I just want to thank you so sincerely for taking this time. I've had a really good time interviewing you and I'll see you on Dennis side gigs. I know. I love seeing you in there. Oh, we need to talk about that because I an idea came up. Well, we, we've got lots to talk about. Okay. Okay. Thanks for having me, Laura. It was thank so much you. Fun. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to my podcast today. I'm Dr. Laura Mock signing out. Remember, if you want to take that free course on correcting your employees, text the words love your employees with no spaces to 66866. Thanks, ladies. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Love Your Practice with Dr. Laura Mock. I would love to meet you. To join our movement, find the Facebook group called Love Your Practice and request to join. If you can't find it, just send me a message and I'll add ya. You'll find me there helping all of my ladies to fall in love with their businesses and have a better life.